Within this video, I'll be installing the camera in the garage, mounting the camera above the hot water heater and bringing the wire back to my equipment area where my network switch is located. Now before we start cutting holes and running cable, it's really important to inspect your location to see that it's clear and it is possible to get a wire there. Now our goal is to get the wire down in this far corner and I see that it's pretty possible to get a wire there. So after confirming that our location is good, it's time to start wiring. My next step during the wiring process is I like to keep my wires neat and organized so I strap all my wires. Now during this installation process having a second hand could be a big help. After feeding the wire through the hole I then pull out the excess wire so I can cut off what I do not need. So I'll be terminating the 4 to 5 ends on the cable. There's pre-made cables available, but you'll probably pay a little more for it because the work's already done. I prefer to put my own end on because it's more flexible to deal with. And also I'm not limited to a certain length. Before cutting a hole in the ceiling, I would say hold the camera up in that location and make sure you like that spot before you cut a hole. I then used a drywall knife to cut out a hole big enough for the connectors to fit through the hole. I then use a pencil to mark the screw holes. Since it's drywall, I use a hand tool to pierce the hole for the plastic anchors. Now I can connect the cable to the camera and the other end into the switch. Most IP camera can be powered using an external power supply, but in this case I'm using PoE off the network switch, which stands for power over ethernet. Now that I see activity on my link light, I know that the camera is powering up. So let's jump over to the software and see if we can hit this camera. Now I'm not going to show you how this software works because that's not the point. The point is to show you the basic concept of using an IP camera and the basics behind it. Now most IP camera, if not all, use a network search tool. So once you plug your camera into the network, this tool would go out and find that camera by its MAC address. With most of these search tools, you can set up the camera to match the scheme of your network. So I've set that up in this software already, so it's time to log into the camera with the IP address. Now most of these IP cameras have some kind of plugin, so you may have to click OK or add plugins to enable the video for your stream. Notice how dark the picture in this camera look. It's more to a camera installation than just mounting the camera, getting a picture and calling it done. There's a lot of settings you can adjust in the camera to get a better picture than you will when you first plug a camera in. I'm not going to touch bases on how I got a good picture from this camera because then I'll be talking about just this camera. I will make another video explaining how you can get better light and better image from your camera.
if you're new to IP camera, I would totally suggest you go in and you start messing with these settings. You can't ruin the camera. Worst case, you can go default the camera if you screwed it up. Play with the camera and every situation is different. The light's always going to be different. So when it comes to setting up an IP camera, one of the things you always do is name your device. Now this is not the name that's gonna pop up on your unit, but if you go to the IP address, it'll tell you which camera this is. Um, you then wanna set up your time zone so that your camera have the correct time And in your video and audio settings, this is where you set up your streams and your resolution, your video quality, frames per second. I found anywhere from eight to 10 is a really good frames per second. But if you do not have a lot of camera on the network, 12 FPS is fine. Um, under image, I don't want to touch too much on this because this can get really in depth, but Here's where you can go to adjust your camera and get good light into your camera on your brightness and contrast and if you mess with these settings a little bit you can really get good image from your camera. So here you have a default button on your camera. Most camera will have this default function. So like I explained before, if you plan with this camera, you did not like how you set it up, instead of trying to fix it back, just set it back to your factory default and just start from scratch again. So for a demonstrational purpose only, um, I have chose to default the camera. I will go back through the whole setup process and then I will also close the garage and turn the environment into like a night environment so you can see when the IR kick on how the camera can look at nighttime. It usually take a while for the switch over from uh, day to night because the camera has to then turn on the IR and also adjust to the light. In these cameras, they're like mini NVRs or DVRs. They have tons of setup you can do within them. Um, I've created privacy masks. If you don't want something in that camera view to be recorded, you can do a ton of stuff. And also you can adjust the brightness contrast during the night mode, but just keep in mind that when you adjust these settings at night, it will also affect your settings during the day. So now I'm going to turn on the lights in the garage so I can see how does this camera look with incandescent lights. It take a while to adjust, but you can see, I mean, not a bad picture, but it can also use some tweaking and um, I think you get the concept behind it. So now that we've run through running the wire, getting the camera up and going, and also getting the image, messing with some of the image and the settings within the camera, let's get this camera on an iPad or a smartphone or some kind of smart device. Since there's so many IP cameras on the market and IP apps on the market, there's no doubt you'll find something that can work for you. If you have some kind of generic cameras that you may have found off eBay or Amazon, um, there's a great app that I've found to work with plenty of cameras. No matter what camera I've tried, it works with it. And this app is called IP Cam Viewer. And that works really great um, for all these devices that I've found so far. So once you've installed the app that may have come with your camera, 
download it install it and just watch how I set this camera up and you can follow along as well so in this tutorial it's pretty simple what I'm doing I'm going to settings I'm going to add a device and I'm just going to put the camera information in that I've given that camera into this app and as long as I'm on the same network it should work now for example if you wanted to see this camera while you're not at home and you're away as long as you have internet and you would get in touch with an IT person or somebody local that may know how to get in your router and set up port forwarding um, that needs to be done so that you can get to your camera from the outside world once port forwarding is set up then you should be able to view your device at any time so this should conclude the video and at this point I want to say thank you for watching give me a thumbs up drop a comment down below hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed to the channel already and I will catch you on the next one <music>